All right. It looks trivial intuitively. That's because it's not actually intuitive. Uh, the first thing, I remember hearing about this problem because I was at the IMO 2017. Thanks, Pakimi77 for the follow. And the comment on it was like, I think <laughs> Jeff Smith went and gave a speech of the form. I think this problem is not suitable for a contest of finite length because the coordination will go on and on and on. <laughs> okay, so to first dispel the hope that this problem is trivial, I'm going to draw a picture. And that picture is... I hope this convinces you the problem is not trivial. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, like, th this is a thing, so... <laughs> Do you think IMO or use is harder on average? It depends on when chronologically. I think I would believe the USMO was harder on average between than the corresponding IMO between like 2005 and 2015 or so. Or two, sorry, let me say 2000 and 2010. And then suddenly in like 2011, there was suddenly a like easy USMO and that happened for a few more years until 2016 when the USMO suddenly returned to its normal difficulty. In the meantime, the IMO was slowly getting harder. Um, and I think they're about comparable now. Let's not try this. Well, you guys are it for it, so... Yeah, 2011 use... It's, it was day two in particular, just... 2011 day two was just, like, unusually easy. And I still don't... That was before I started being involved as an organizer, so I don't really know why. Okay, so... I don't know what I'm supposed to do for this problem. Um... Uh, how do you draw a square? That's a picture you can draw. Some 20 of us claimed to solve a problem, only one was correct. Yeah, that sounds right. <sighs> Gradual change. 2018 USMO harder than 2018 IMO. Um... I think they're... Oh no, 2018 was harder actually, I think. This seems impossible for n equals 3. Um... Well, for n equals 3, any subset of the vertices is continuous. So it doesn't... n equals 3 is not useful to work on. It's n equals 4, you want to show I can't... So n equals 4 I think is a good one to work on. So if I have two squares, why can't I get this vertex and this vertex in? Um... <laughs> oh god. Uh, why do you guys vote for this problem? <laughs> How is this geometry? Um, somehow. Consider the centers. Uh, I believe that. So if I consider the centers, um, I see. You look at the circumcircles, and they intersect at two points, and. So if I like draw this circumcircle and this circumcircle, then there's two intersection points. What can I do with that? Oh, that's a really... <laughs> the circumcircles don't need to intersect. Um, also, wow, that is a really bad circumcircle. It's, not, it's supposed to pass through the other red vertex. Oh, uh, geez. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. No, the, circ the circumcircles don't need to intersect. Uh, oh, that makes it really annoying. 
I do like. Actually, I have. Th I like this Hamathody idea in general, though. Or not Hamathody, but Spiral Sim. So, these two guys are similar in some way. Evan, I hurt my finger three weeks ago. When do you think my finger will heal? I, I don't know. Why is it trivial if the circles don't intersect? Like, if I. In this picture, the circles don't intersect, but I don't see why that implies anything. Either they overlap, or they are disjoint. If they, no, it's not like in this picture um, that I just drew. You you can have a square. Um, like the circles don't meet, but the one square overlaps the other. Is <laughs> it's really bad. I don't think this joint is trivial. Like, this, this, here's a picture where I have a red circle and a blue circle. The red circle is in the blue circle, but the red square has vertices outside the blue square. <laughs> is this joint... Look at the distance from center of one of the circumcircles to the other vertices. <sighs> That's probably so. I assume that all translations are in one of two fixed directions. Yeah, I, I think we want to do something with the fact that the two polygons are similar. Um, so, actually... Your hair is in your eye. Well, like everyone else in quarantine, um, I don't... I haven't had a haircut for a while. Yeah, this this is actually G6 level. I, I, I firmly believe this is genuinely a 3-6 level problem. <laughs> because it's so hard to think about. Like I was I, I was talking with leaders about this problem at the IMO, and like the only thing I did was I drew this heck octagon picture and then I decided I didn't want to try the problem anymore. It's all vertices of A and then all vertices of B. Um, yeah, this is really hard to think about. Oh, no. What is approaching Nirvana? I don't know. What's the process behind this solution? <laughs> yeah, I actually... I don't... So, someone mentioned earlier that we might want to consider doing some sort of continuous movement theme. Uh, I think if you told me this was JMO1, I wouldn't believe you. I feel like something about this problem like scares me uh, when I see it. Honestly, because of the octagon picture, like, I think well, the moment I see the octagon picture, I'm like, oh, jeez. Um, and a swing action. Yeah, so... So, rotate, scale, or i.e. collectively spiral sim, 
and I guess translate are the ones that we're thinking about. I don't even know how to solve. Okay, well, I know how to solve a problem if you only scale or rotate. Um, but I don't. Once you have the translation, is where things get weird. So let's imagine maybe we can fix the centers. How about that? Let's let's start by fixing the centers and do in an easy case where um, they're disjoint. And then I'm allowed to rotate and dilate. Um, just scale and rotate. Um, yes. Just scale and rotate will work if you're willing to use a different... Um, if you're willing to rotate around points that aren't the... something. Maybe for simplicity though, I want, I want to try fixing the centers like I've drawn here and then see if I rotate and scale, does it do anything? Um, it might not, and we might have to follow your suggestion of like doing a rotate scale around like just a random point. Actually, now that I think about it, um, is the claim equivalent to saying that if I have... No, it's not. Never mind. I wanted to say, like, look at three consecutive vertices and show that if you have two of them, but not... Actually, no, that, that is something. Let's say that you have, like, one vertex and two vertices like that. Or, um... In general, if I have an n bond, if I have two vertices and then this one is outside the polygon, it would be enough to show that this, then every other vertex has to be in there, right? It's sort of like continuity. It's like between. No, that's not. That's not sufficient. What am I talking about? Um... Thanks, Innocent Kenton Twelve, for the follow. Yeah, they may not be one gap. Um, ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be one gap. Okay, I forgot that. Um, yeah, it might be true that we want to try to prove there's no one gap anyways, just to see kind of what's going on. Could inversion work here? Um, you want to... Have I thought about convexity at all? I don't really see how you would use that though. Regular is stronger. Look. Okay, do some sort of adjusting idea. Like if I have two opposite vertices inside, you can move them around while preserving the inside and outsideness. Man, the Twitch filter is really... I'm just gonna turn down the filters. With a mid vertex outside and between would not be intersection. Hmm. 
Rotation about center reserves continuity over a set. What do you mean continuity over a set? So like suppose I have Like if a set is inside, only set union. Sorry, I don't actually understand what that means. The set of vertices inside the polygon will stay continuous. So you're saying if I have a okay, so if I if I have some guys inside, and then I rotate, um, rotate through a random point or some. So we fix the placement of three vertices and move it from there. Um, I don't see. So I guess we don't need to look at all the vertices of B. Um, in general, if I have uh, this the picture, it's like I, I have a blue. You have a blue polygon, all right, and then we're we're imagining a situation where I have a segment that's inside, and then like there's two points that are outside that are both part of the similar polygon, and I want to make that not work. So. By homothety or rotation, whatever, this is going to supposed to correspond to like it's going to four is the minimum number I need to get a statement of some shape, and so it's like you have some quadrilateral, and I have a different quadrilateral, and this guy's outside. Is that even possible? Just in general, can I have a quadrilateral where? 9 AMO to use some more perfection. It was 8 to 41, so you're off by one point each way. Um. <laughs> this is actually not even possible, right? I, I think, intuitively. Like, I shouldn't be able to get... 
Um, oops. If I have a convex quadrilateral. Yeah, if I have a convex quadrilateral, I don't. Okay, because here's the thing. Um, if it's true for squares, is it true for. It's true for some general. A little more generally, although I can't really tell how much. I can shear it by a little bit. I don't know if that helps. But I feel like looking at this picture, it shouldn't even be possible to get this shape, like where a red polygon is has two vertices in and then two vertices out and is similar to like some green polygon like this, I think. Why is everyone talking about SFBA anyways? <laughs> Southern area. It doesn't work for rectangles. Can you get... It's false for rectangles? Are you serious? Why... why... No, no way, right? If I have two rhombuses intersecting... Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, scrap. Yeah, it's not true for rhombuses. Um... <sighs> Jesus. Okay, so much for that idea. I was hoping I could get rid of the end gun part. <sighs> It's also a rhombus is because I can draw a picture like this. Um, do I think equal angular? Yeah, I suspect reg poly might be too strong. Even though rectangles are congruent, it's false. How do you... Yeah, you... you... No, even congruent rectangles doesn't work. Um, if the way you break congruent rectangles is you draw one rectangle like that, and then you have it um, share a diagonal like that. Isn't this problem on a handout? Oh, I might have I might have put it on a handout actually. I never actually did it. Um, no, I don't think so. I didn't put it on a notice handout. Uh, So it's false for rectangles, so I really do need the... This problem's too inhumane. You're the, you're the one that paid <laughs> 1680 V-Bucks to put this problem on the stream. <laughs> oh, man. It's false for rectangles, that's really bad. So why is it false for rectangles? Um, and true for a square? Just that's so. So how how is the regular being used in that case? It's like I can't do this rotation thing for a square because it just it just happens to line up exactly. So it's, it's actually false for rectangles. That's a very important counterexample, actually. Because I was, it's, it means, like, for example, even similar and cyclic isn't enough. Or even congruent and cyclic is not enough. I actually needed the square. Why did I need the square? Uh, something, something about the proof has to use the fact that um, it's so symmetric. But what, what would I do with that?
can you please live write a handout? Um, probably not today because I actually need to set things up for that. But um, I might do it in some stream. Okay, okay. Um, so. I can erase that. Erase that. So I still want to focus zoom somehow reduce the number of vertices of B because I think there's too many to think about. Yeah, I, I think if it's false for re congruent rectangles, it's very unlikely to be true for um can you watch me live mod a thread? Oh, jeez. Which thread is this? I'm not touching that thread, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so... Let them, let's say I have an octagon and then I have a counter example to the problem. You die that the counter example, the counter example means you have four points such that um, they're not in the right order or whatever. So you have two outside and two inside. I want to dilate it so that I, um, let, let me even first do a very simple case. Like what if I just have uh, this picture? So. Why can't I have a square that like does that? What's the argument that this doesn't work? <sighs> the argument is that actually, well, the easy argument is that for the square in, if I actually haven't matched the vertices is that uh, it lies no, lying in the circle is not enough. That's the whole problem. Although there are arcs of the circle contained in the polygon. So in this case, if I... A, a simple counterexample for here is this angle here, which we said is 90. If this angle is 90, I mean, if it's 90, 90... If it's 45, 45, 90, then it lies inside. So it amounts, for this very, very special case, um, that's what it's saying, I guess. That if I draw a, okay, fine. Now, If I have three point, if I have two points in and two points out, um, okay, fine. So let's draw a more general, slightly more general. It's like I have the point should. If I do this, can I show that a square can have both in and both out? Um, essentially. I want one of these two points to... And it has to be the same. What I'm doing is I'm imagining like a part of the octagon. So... Like, for the problem to be false, you just need any... You just need four points to um, sort of be in the wrong... Like you have A and then... The problem being false just means you have four vertices of B that look like that. So two in, two out. And these four are similar to the stuff in A in some quarter. So I want something like that. So why is it true if I draw a chord inscribed in a regular octagon that the square, or actually for that matter,
anything similar to the What is your favorite TST 2020 problem? What was on this TST? Probably the flood. I think it's the flood. Given any configuration, rotate and translate such that the center of the smaller square's origin of the complex plane and larger... So I don't understand how this rotation step is working. Like... How... how do you... It doesn't work if we reduce the N of B. Um... Like, what, why does rotation preserve the... Which, which point are you rotating around? I guess that's the actual question. Um, rotate everything. Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay, I see. Um... But he's keeping one parallel. So you, you, the square in the, okay, so you want to, so you have a square in here and the other one is like, something like that. Okay, so that's fine. And then. Just simple argument with side. <laughs> okay, what's the simple argument I'm not seeing? If the smaller one is two opposites on side, okay. So A plus B I and minus A minus B I. I'll try to refine more. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually so interested in the. Um, also, I'm still looking at this octagon, and it feels weird to me that it's sort of like the n equals four case is showing up inside the n equals eight case if I specialize. Like, if I just want this square, um, it's like this. The little square here is gotten expanded to an octagon so I might want to do some argument like if I have this <laughs> I 
Well, by continuity, I can fudge it. I should be able to fudge it so that it's actually inscribed, right? Um, what am I trying to figure out? I'm... Okay, okay. So, better yet, if I have a general A gone, or N gone, then for the problem to be false, all I, it would be enough to um, get three points on the perimeter and then one point out of it. So, I guess here's a question is that we might think about is why can't I um, get a square to look like that? Three points and one point out. And that actually looks a lot more feasible. It's like I jiggle it until I have a shape that looks like this. Um, actually, I can do this for any n gone for 4 dividing n. Um, and why, why is this not a possible shape? Thanks for the one bit, the map. Aren't the boundary conditions kind of ugly? Um, you you fudge. Like if you have a counter example, you have um, two points in and two point out, and then you can translate or slide or something until. Um, I guess it's possible that they both lock in at the exact same time. That is that, mm. Maybe I do want to work with outside? Can I spend 1688 V-Bucks for a problem on request? Yeah, this might not be a good use of stream time, honestly. Changes to simple actions would be the clearest way. Down at n by k vertices polygon into k n polygons. Oh, so does it suffice to solve it for the prime? I don't think it's quite that simple. How is the blue a square? It's a very distorted square. Like my, my claim is this shouldn't happen, and I'm trying to figure out why, and I can't. Thanks, Dennis Chen, for the one bit. Hmm. Alright, how long have I been staring at this? <laughs> if the polygons have the same orientation... I was thinking about this, but I couldn't see how to do even that case. So if there's no rotation, the orientations are the same. Uh, there's homothety that sends one to the other. Um... What can I do if there's homothety? So... Now toss on convexity and you should be done. I would believe that. So, if there's a homothety... Um... Yeah, so if it if it's if they are um, not translated, then it's best the homothety is specified by a single real parameter k. If k equals one, they all line up. If not, then something happens. Um, I don't know what happens. Well, we can without loss of generality assume we're pulling back. So like pulling back. So. 
when I pull back, um, the outermost points from this O, consider zooming. I'm, I'm imagining zooming the other way, so green to red. So these two points are definitely out. The two outermost points are definitely outside, actually. This one and this one. Um, so we actually have two points definitely outside. Uh, Actually, how do you tell what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Uh... So if I zoom out, or if I zoom the, I'm pulling. The two outer... <laughs> Help. <laughs> okay, I really should be able to finish from here. I, re I really should be able to finish. Um... Okay. You want to use the ray shooting condition for interior. Okay, what, what's the ray shooting condition? What should I be looking at here? I mean, I'm trying to even just do the 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 the, 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 the like single homotopy case um, because I think if we can't do the single homotopy case, I think we shouldn't bother trying to do the general one. Honestly, like th this this. Uh, I guess the homotopy depends on whether the homotopy point is inside the square or not, too. Like, for example, I guess... Thanks, Nement, for the cheer. Why did we vote for this? I don't know. I, I was totally expecting this problem to get voted down, and then it was it like won by a very large margin. Uh... Okay, actually, 
here's a question. So we know the problem is false for rectangles. Is the problem true for homothetic figures, just in general? Convex homothetic figures. It's not true, okay. <laughs> Evan's reactions made it seem funny to vote on this one. Uh. All right. Oh my word. Okay. Well, I do want to actually look at the other problems. So, um, yeah, I feel like convex homothetic should have worked, but I can't. I can't even prove that, which is kind of sad. Um. Like, I'm looking at homothety, in these pictures I know that the outermost points um, should leave. Like, there, there's two outer points and those should leave. But um, I, don't, I don't know what to do about the others. Oh my god, that's so many triangles. Okay, well... Did you treat as inner hole and outer hole? Actually, okay, so if, if it's true for... Um, I see. If it doesn't work, then A must be bigger than B, B must be bigger than A. So, in this quadrilateral situation, it might actually suffice to do the quadrilateral case because if it's if we think the problem is true for convex homothetic, then like suppose you have a counterexample, right, with the homothety. Um, you know, I pull, I take a point O, and I pull. And if I have a point that's a counterexample, looks like something where. You, you pull, you have two points in and then two points out. So I'll just draw very crude. It's it, it's hard to draw counterexample pictures for this. Uh, let me just pretend these are four points. No, that's not even the right order. Okay, screw it. Ratio of distance from inner versus outer. What is with all the emote spam? <sighs> Alright, one moment, please. This problem is the definition of suffering. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to move on to a different problem as well. So if you guys all are, then we can see what the people want. Keep trying G6. <laughs> I really tried. I agree it would be very satisfying to solve, but I'm not also don't Oh wow. <laughs> I'll spend all my points saying no if I have to. <laughs> you can consider an inscribed polygon inside. I see. So if you have a true for homothety, then by, you can start rotating the polygon. The only time you run into trouble is if I have an inscribed polygon um, that messes things up. Wow, this is a tight vote.
Oh, oh snap. <laughs> oh man. I spent 400 V bucks on this. Oh no. I think we're close to being done. I don't feel like we're close to being done. <laughs> okay, so. If it's true after the Hamatidae, you can start rotating the polygon, rotating B, and you only run into trouble if you manage to get something inscribed. So. Do we prove the Hamaltidi case? How do we do it? I totally couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, that's a very strong claim. Okay. Um, claim. If three points inscribed, so is fourth. That, that, that's actually a very good claim. Um, I, I feel like it's not true either, but people are telling me to try to prove it, so I'll... I'll give it a shot. I, I suspect it's not true, though. You ah, uh, do I want a GOG for this? Yeah, actually no. There's no way this is true, right? For a larger polygon. Yeah, that is probably too strong. It's true for squares only because squares don't have enough points. Like if I have, if I inscribe a right triangle in a square, then I use three adjacent sides. Um, so that's kind of, that's all there is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're not getting to Baba today, are we? <laughs> Alright, so... Have we been doing this the entire time? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> we haven't done anything else other than stare at the sprawl. I think people are going a few different directions. I'm still, I'm still trying to deal with the homothetic case, but uh, oh, when I said we haven't done anything, I meant um, shortlist wise. This is the only short problem that we've looked at today, and we've been on it for about an hour. How about start with an n-gon and a circle? Oh, we have an ad break. Uh. Uh, all right, I respect people's votes. All right, so we're gonna take a 30 second ad break so I can not think about this problem for 30 seconds and I'll be back. Last. <laughs> Chat still works fine. I think it's in Scar Chain,
We're back. Um, okay, so... If the inscribed claim is true, that's very strong. Um, so is that... Is that... Are we so lucky that that's true? We can find out. Oops, uh... No, 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 no. Uh... Nero. My hockey setup's gone really wonky. Sorry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I pressed the wrong button. Um... So actually, this is saying, I mean, if this is true, what it's really saying is that I cannot inscribe three points without ins inscribing everything, um, which is a very bold claim, uh, but it could... <sighs> Prepare for another trolley ad break. Oh no, thanks for the cheer though. Yeah, actually, this is true, really? So if I inscribe three points, they're similar to some polygon in here. Um, let me let me draw an acon. I think Phygon is too small for this. And let's say I take like one of the triangles and I inscribe Someone can make the smaller end gone attached to the larger one. I'm not totally... Can I sign your copy of Egmo after Cove-19 ends? Um, yeah, sure. You have to come find me though. <laughs> Why is chat in slow mode? Um, some people were spamming emoticons earlier, so I slowed the chat. I'll turn it on. What is happening right now? So the one lead we have is um, we think that this we we think that this we have a very strong claim that if you have inscription, you're okay. Um, oops, did I time out the wrong person? Shoot. <laughs> Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, I'm sorry. <sighs> I like that. I actually missed. That's a little embarrassing. Yeah, sorry. I, I was trying to press the timeout button and I just clicked the wrong one because there's too many of you. Um, <laughs> no, I accidentally pressed it. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to take the advice and... Uh, no. I want to apologize you about. We believe. I don't believe. 
I think the, the claim is the strongest thing we have so far, actually. Um, well, I'm going to I'm going to take a shot at actually trying to use this claim. And then if we still can't get it to work, I'll do another vote. So the claim is that I shouldn't be able to. Here's a regular Aegon. And I claim that I shouldn't be able to pick two points on the wrong edges, like, um, I'll call them I and J, should we? So if I have a bad edge X, Y, um, yeah. So let's try to get a similar to ABD. Can I do that? Uh, how, how do I make it as similar to ABD? Well, let me draw ABD first. How is this claim true? Um, it looks like it's true. <laughs> Two points on the boundary is very easy to work with. Okay, so... If I start with the really, mm, can I, can I make a point Z such that Z is similar to ABD? Uh, line Z equals X plus Y minus X times D minus A over B minus A. Did that work? Haha. -ha, okay. That, that will make this a lot easier. Okay, so if I start here, it's outside, and the claim is I shouldn't be able to get it inside, which, uh, yeah, that, that looks like I can get it inside. So, just edges, not inscribed like the vertices, just edges. Okay, so it seems like I just obviously can't lie inside. Why is this? So this angle is pretty big. So if the polygon managed to lie inside, it would be... How will this work? It would be sufficient actually for it to lie outside the circle. So my claim is that this lies, just lies outside the circle, period. And the reason is that this edge is too wide, say. So let's draw in the circle. This is where the circle might help. Because we think this claim is just true. Um, so this angle is 45. And given two points here. Yeah, 45 is the smallest you can pass here. It'll be outside the zero. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Oh, this is a very case dependent argument. <laughs> am I missing any cases? I definitely am. So the the... Oh my god. Just length is bigger? Is that good enough? Oh yeah, so XY will be bigger than BC in this picture. That is just true. And if I want to do this argument in general, when I pick the blue triangle, I should look at any side that's not the longest one. Um, uh, for Geico Lizard, I'll type it. One of the few formulas I actually have memorized. Okay, yeah, so this is actually good. It's like, suppose something similar to the blue triangle is inscribed. Look at the shortest side of the blue triangle. We cl I first claim that it has to be the right, the, the correct number of um, sides and that it can't do this because otherwise that angle is, x, y is too large, that z point are sort of adjacent. Um, I think this will work as long as I pick x, y to correspond to the short side of the triangle. Uh, 
So we can we say we can take the green one, and um, it's the shortest side. We can have it um, x on the side AB here, and then y varies somewhere. And this angle up there will be too large. There's no fourth point yet. We haven't even added the fourth point. My first claim is I have three points, like the blue and the green match up, then the sides. X, Y, and A, B should like correspond to the same. They, they, they should jump over the same number of sides. But yeah, this is admittedly confusing. Um, so subclaim here, if X and A, B, so if A, B, if X, Y, Z is similar then the side counts are the same. Just lie on the boundary of B. Okay, so normalize distance between them among B, then for Yeah. Okay. So I mean, once we have y is in segment BC, once we have that, um, I think sort of for continuity reasons. So let, let me make sure this is true. I have x here. Oh, that's not good. Um, this is the short one. I'm fixing this angle to be 45 degrees, so it um, yeah, I think it has to be spiral. Let me see. Like, there's a unique point on BC for which it hits the DE at all. I'm worried, will it hit any other points? I think the answer is no, because, or hit any other sides. And the reason is that in the, that's, that's not good though, it's kind of specific to this. See if in if I fix X, the locus is a line. Um, oh, it's a straight line. That makes my life a lot easier. Yeah. Oh my god, we're using moving points. It's not a good sign when that happens. There is a locus tool in GeoGebra. Oh, do I type like locus Z or something? Yep, straight line. Starting from a point on parallel to CD, why is this? Um, some spiral sim stuff. So there's going to be a unique point, and it's probably going to be the one, and well, it, there's also at least one point that we know of, and it's the one that causes the X, Y, Z to match up. Hmm. 
The straight line will always intersect the polygon twice. Is there a reason why the line is vertical? Is that easy to see? Lighting principle. Well, so the upshot of this is that um, Why does that help? I mean, I think that actually might just do it. So if I have a counterexample to the problem, you have two points, you have two points inside, two points outside, and then I move it until, you move it until it clicks. Um, so you, have two, you, you can fudge the inside points until the third one is on, but now the fourth one is on too. And like some back and forth will show that they were actually both in or both out, I think. Oh, if you send Y to infinity. Yeah, that's a good way to see it. Let's have one more for moving points. I don't know. <sighs> okay. So, like, I think that might be roughly how it goes. It's like... The subclaim we prove by doing some angle calculation to show if X is on AB, then Y should also be on BC. Then as Y varies for fixed X, this is a straight line. Um, if I take it to be on the infinity line, it's, you know, something. So, yeah. Okay, I think I could, We've been on here 90 minutes, yeah. <laughs> so the claim is saying, suppose I have... Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. If three vertices of B lie on A, then all of them do. That's a claim. What if X is on AB? Y is B. And Z is on BC. Oh, shoot. Uh, no, he, he's saying that um, if it's like, I, I can just scale the, okay. Yeah, three consecutive vertices. Uh, shoot. Homothetes. I mean, in that case, it's fine. Then either all of them do... Oh, no. Oh, no. Um... Oh, Jesus. Um, I'm grasping at straws here at this point. <laughs> so, either either we're in the very funny case where you, I just took a monthly at some vertex, or it, it's like kind of a rotation thing. 
That's a claim. Um, so actually, there's like really only two cases. It's like either homothidated vertex or rotation and inscribe, like that. Okay, so homothity case is easy, and otherwise, um, jeez, all right. So I think something like this should work. I, I think this is roughly what the solution path should look like. Um, yeah, so what you do now is if there's a counterexample to the general problem, you have two points in, two points out. You fudge them until three of them are on and one of them is out. Or three of them are on, then the other one goes on at the exact same moment and it's one of these two pictures. If it's one of these two pictures, you rewind to just before that collision and you see that there's a contradiction. I think is very generally... So basically I'm convinced if we can prove this claim, then we should be okay. Who's your favorite fiction author? Um, I have to think about that. I don't have one off my head. And the proof of the claim, I think, is along these lines, even though I don't. There's, that's going to be finicky. Yeah, I actually changed my mind about this problem being satisfying to solve because I think even if we solve it, we're st we'll still be staring at it and second guessing ourselves. <laughs> like it's very hard to tell when you when you've actually completely got it. Yes, but I think this should. If it's out, if I have a triangle and there's a similarity, um, if it's too far out, then it's a it's a line. Okay, so if the it's been one of point five, um, yeah, I I think we can. I think you can easily get a proof that when I have an inscription, the side counts should match as well. So if I have like for example one one arc, two arc, three arcs, then this one should also go one arc, two arc, three arcs. Then because of that, um, there's a unique intersection point, so it's unique. Is this actually, does this, okay. I think this should work. We're using gliding here. Um, so subclaim one, then the side counts are the same. The way that breaks down is if in here, when I use the Z, um, Rename, no, 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 rename. If I use point C instead, and I change this to shoot, why? Why didn't that work? God, freak. C minus A over B minus should be B here. If I use C and then I replace this one by polygon. This is an edge case for which it's not true because you could end up in this situation here um, where the edge counts are not the same. Um, but unless the blue triangle is isosceles with two adjacent sides, then I think it should work. If I switch this back to D, you look at the shortest side or something. You do that, and then it should be true that you can only... Well, for that matter, there's at most two sides, because we, by the gliding principle, this is on a line. Or I guess the thing we're trying to prove is that Y is not, Y is on BC. 
Yeah, so it's actually going to be x equals by, is the claim. And... Right, if it's here, it goes out because the angle is too big. And that's just true in general. You do this argument with the shortest side. It's not helpful. Well, I mean, what it means is that if x equals by, then you actually know exactly where the polygon is. It's going to be like tick, 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 tick. And then that will it'll actually just be inscribed exactly in. And that means when you rewind one step, um, you're fine. So my, my incoherent rambling, I think if I sat down for like two hours, I think I could compile this into a proof. We don't have two hours. We have exactly two hours left in the stream, and I don't think I want to spend it doing that. Um, apparently the gliding principle says that as I vary, if I fix a point and then vary another point here on a straight line, the third point will also be on a straight line. This is easiest to see by complex numbers because this is moving on a line and this thing serves to, I mean, it's a spiral image of the line, basically. Yeah, but I think the red claim is the ball game. <sighs> okay, so... I, I do actually think this should basically be the solution, but I, I want to go on to a different problem at this point. So, new poll. <laughs> Adjourn G6. Um, complex numbers, I think, honestly, is the easiest way to see it because um, you're, you're just... Everything's linear as the very short version. Like, I'll put it this way. Um, if So you, you see that it's a line segment, right? The line segment is from B to C. If I took the midpoint of BC, it would be the midpoint of that line segment. Yeah, I agree that expanding is how you finish. And then when you expand, when the third vertex hits by the red claim, you actually know where the entire polygon is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know where the whole polygon is, but now when you rewind to just before the expansion, um, you're, you're like, well, now they were either both inside or both outside. But honestly, I'm sick of this problem. <laughs> it's the XUI constant. Yeah. Yeah, I do think it was correct for us to actually keep going until we got here, because I feel like at this point, if I sat down, I could solve it, whereas 30 minutes ago, I don't think we had all the ideas yet. Um, but at this point, I don't want to work out the rest of the details on stream. This time it's unanimous. <laughs> don't tip the vote. Oh my <laughs> B is closed, so expansion never changes any interiorness. <laughs> I think we're fine. I, I think we have all the ideas at this point. Um, although, um, given this problem, it's hard to say that, but I suspect this we shouldn't need any more insights. And we just need to write out words. Okay, what an adventure. Was this difficult in respect to the results? I don't know what you mean by results, because this was the shortest problem. No one was solving it. I do... There was one person who mentioned it was on their country's TST, and then 20 people thought they solved it, and then one person solved it. <laughs> Which is actually more than I would expect. I feel like this is a problem I would expect like zero people. Eh, maybe that's not true. It depends on if you have a lot of time. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah, let's move on.